We're back on the Pet Stop, and I'm your host, Dr. Brian Voynich. You know, Great Danes uh, are fantastic dogs. We have the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue uh, Group here uh, with this big, handsome fella, and we've got Eva and Lori with us. Thanks for coming on. It's a Thanks pleasure. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Okay, well, Thanks. tell us about this handsome fella. This is Dante's, huh? This is Dante's. Uh, a little five-year-old oh. pooch. Yes. Okay. And you, what you got? What got you into this uh, Great Dane frenzy in the first place? I have always loved the breed, and yeah, I've had great. great Danes for the last 25 years, mm -hmm. and been involved on and off with rescue for all that time. How about you, Larry? Well, I got involved about a year ago. I uh -huh. have a four-year-old Great Dane, and while surfing the web, found out about the Great Dane Rescue and got involved that way. They're great dogs, um, but unfortunately, there has been almost uh, somewhat of a frenzy because of Scooby-Doo. And yes, that, yes. you know, that can do bad things for Great Danes, like uh, 101 Dalmatians did terrible things for Dalmatians. you having hundreds and thousands of them euthanized throughout the country because people ran out and got one. That's and right. you should do it intelligently, not, uh, not ignorantly. Tell us, give us some advice on uh, what uh, kind of situation, what household uh, would be suitable for a Great Dane? Well, I think one of the most important things is the uh, folks have to have a fenced yard. Mm -hmm. They need to have a place to run and play and exercise that's uh, secure and safe. Right. They need to have a game-friendly environment in the house. Uh, not a lot of um, breakables, mm -hmm. uh, keeping in mind the size and the tail and whatnot. Yeah. And um, they pretty much need Tail's to... Tail's quite a weapon, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. It really is. He was whacking me a few times before we came on camera. <laughs> That's right. Uh, total, totally innocently, but uh, but boy, he's big. And in, and in the front lobby area, he was just reaching over the desk, checking out the computer keyboard. Yes. So um, what a reach. But um, what made you fell in love with this, uh, uh, with this breed? I just have always thought they are just so magnificent and noble and uh, really just puppies and big bodies. Uh-huh, they are. Yeah. yeah. Silly, silly, silly gooses. They're, they're wonderful, what loving, affectionate. What does he weigh? About 175 pounds. Wow. Okay. So just like a person. Yes. And you were saying that he can, uh, he can stand and, and reach uh, your husband's, uh, be eye level with your husband who's six feet four with his paws on his shoulder. Yes. So he's a, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. Um, why do people give up uh, the greyhounds that you're looking, you know, you're looking for homes for? You have as much as 75 to 100 at a time, you say. Absolutely. We have about that now. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are going out and buying cute little puppies mm -hmm. that they've seen in the Scooby-Doo movie. Yeah. And all of a sudden, those five or six month old puppies are 100 pound dogs and uh, they haven't taken them to obedience and mm -hmm. they're a little bit out of hand and they just don't know quite what to do with them. Yeah. They also find they're a big financial responsibility and they're a big time commitment. Tell us about that, Lori. What are, what are the financial uh, considerations with having a great team? Well, generally they do need a, a premium type food mm -hmm. uh, because they're a larger dog. There are also larger medical expenses yeah. that can be occurred as well. Right. You know, it's interesting. You know, you, you have a 17 pound, uh, you know, small breed dog that comes in and needs medications. You have a 175 pound dog that comes in and needs 10 times the dosages and uh, exactly. frequently that's 10 times the expense which is incredible you know you can uh, a family can uh, probably more easily handle three small breed dogs than one large breed and I don't that's think that's really commonly thought of but uh, what are the rewards you get lots of love uh -huh. <laughs> love kisses affection yes. A dog that wants to be with you pretty much all the time. Right. They're really a part of the family. Now, um, if, if people are looking for a Great Dane, uh, you know, what what uh, attributes do you look for in that family? They, they have to have a fenced-in yard. What about children considerations? They can have children. He wants to answer this one. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and take that one, Dante. Children are absolutely fine. They are wonderful dogs with mm -hmm. children. We just look for a family, though, where the children can understand that they need to respect the dog. Right. And... Um, treat it properly. You know, we, um, I guess the only issues we've run into are toddlers that really don't understand. They can't jump on the dogs mm -hmm. and, and pull things out of their mouths, pull on their ears, etc. Sure, sure. And how do you test these dogs that are eligible for uh, adoption with your program? Well, all our dogs go into foster homes before they're adopted oh, out. Smart. So a dog that would be adopted by a home with children will have lived in a foster home with mm -hmm. children. This is much like, uh, I guess, 4-H families taking in seeing eye puppies before they're uh, released to the seeing eye. Yes. It's a potentially heart-wrenching experience. You get really attached to these guys. Well, we have a very high percentage of what we call foster failures. Okay. <laughs> they foster. stay where they are. Foster families, they can't give them up. And I get an awful lot of tearful calls when the fosters leave. Oh, I bet. I heard that one fa foster family has 11 Great Danes. Is 
that true? Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, it's a family down in Virginia that will not turn away a Dane. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. You know, what are some of the common medical issues that uh, Great Dane owners, potential Great Dane owners, should uh, realize? Well, I think the biggest um, problem that we see with them is bloat. Yeah. Where the uh, stomach can fill with gas yes. and actually twist and cut off the blood supply. That's right. And we had that topic fatal. on recently. It's, it's a good thing you brought that up with Dr. Um, Wendy Ross, uh, because this can be surgically corrected, but it is a medical emergency. Tell us some of the symptoms that you'll find with that. Well, initially, uh, your dog will be very restless and yep. uh, pacing, not able to lie down, get comfortable. Um, you'll see the stomach start to swell and get hard. Absolutely uh, right. And then sometimes they'll, drooling, they'll try trailing. to vomit, but they won't be able to sometimes because the esophagus, the food tube, will be twisted right. along the axis of that stomach. So that, you're absolutely right. That can be a huge, uh, huge problem and they, they have to see the veterinarian immediately they have to go to an emergency facility if yes. it's, uh, during the evening hours because if these dogs aren't operated on within um, a matter of hours uh, then it's typically a fatal situation right so that's a good point some of the tips um, what do you tell potential owners as far as tips as far as preventing bloat well we tell them that they need to give them both their food and water from raised feeders Mm -hmm. We always suggest uh, digestive enzymes and mm -hmm. probiotics along with the food. Right. They need to be kept quiet for an hour before, uh, at least two hours hour, hour afterwards, no strenuous mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm. We tell them um, don't let them gulp water when they're hot. We suggest right. ice cubes or chips instead until they cool off. Right. That's and a um, many of us have the uh, surgery done. Uh, preventatively, we have their stomachs stacked. Yeah, and, and that's done, you know, we, we did a couple of those recently on Great Danes that came in for our varicose hysterectomy. They were spayed at six, six months of age, and we tacked down their stomach at the same time, which is a very good prophylactic procedure to prevent that stomach from twisting on itself. Mm -hmm. um, Lori, tell us um, about uh, some of the other, potentially we have to be concerned about screening them for heart disease, is that right? Yes, yeah. that would be true. Yeah, and we talked about that not too long ago with a cardiologist about um, cardiomyopathy. In fact, Dr. Justin Strauss was on talking about that relationship with cats and feline hyperthyroidism recently. But um, they get a dilatative form of cardiomyopathy, which is very obvious on a chest x-ray and, uh, and difficult to treat. So nutrition plays an important role, doesn't it? Yes. yes. Which is how you got involved with Dr. Skank, a good uh, right. <laughs> friend and colleague of mine. And also you're, you're at Red Bank? Uh, yes, Dr. Carl Samarco. Oh, sure, right. sure. Yeah, another cardiologist. He's going to be on in a couple of months, in fact. Ah. Yeah. All right. Um, so do you have anything, uh, any any other pieces of advice uh, to wrap it up as far as um, people who want to take home a guy like this? Well, I'd just like to say that we have about 75 of these wonderful dogs available for adoption. We're also looking for folks that might like to come on board with us and volunteer or foster. Mm. You know, there's a big need for foster homes. I betcha, yeah. And, and you're, you're involving seven or eight states? Along yes, the, we are. The, we cover uh, down through the Carolinas. Hmm. Okay. We cover an eight state area. All right, is there a phone number and website we can get you uh, for more information or to be a foster Absolutely. parent? Absolutely. Okay. The phone number is 908-904-6648. Our website is www.mid-atlantic-danerescue.com. Great. Okay. okay. Well, thanks, Eva. Best thank of luck. Thank you so much for having us. Well, you're welcome, thank Lori. You Keep much. up the great thank work. You. And thank you, Dantes. You were a real gentleman up here. Big guy. Taking up a whole stage at one point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Good folks. Boy. Now it's time to meet our latest pet of the week. And uh, this pet of the week is a former patient of my first guest, Dr. Renee Alsaraf. This is Jake Thomas, an eight-year-old golden retriever from Montclair, Upper Montclair. And a few years ago, he had cancer. He had a very severe form of mast cell tumor. And Dr. Alsaraf treated him. The good news is he has been cancer-free for about three years now. Well, Jake loves to swim, especially in the uh, ocean down at Long Beach Island. And he also loves to play with his neighborhood kids. And he is a beloved member of the family. Uh, that's Brian, his wife Monica, and beautiful daughter Mackenzie. Well, Monica says he's the best dog you can ever have in the whole wide world. Congratulations, Jake. You're our Pet Stop Pet of the Week. And thanks for showing us how well animals can recover from cancer. If you would like your pet to be Pet of the Week, just send their photos to the Pet of the Week at News 12 New Jersey. P.O. Box 6558, Edison, New Jersey, 08837, or email those pictures to thepetstop at news12.com. Well, still to come today, volunteer D. Romaho will join us from the St. Hubert's Animal Welfare Center in North Branch with a beautiful cat in need of a good home. So stick around, the Pet Stop is coming right back.